Hi guys and welcome to Super Metallurgy. Okay, so uh, this is a 2010 Aston Martin DBS. Um, this is a quick video which I wasn't going to do, and um, suddenly seen it turn up in Tom's workshop. So I thought I'd give you the quick tour of it. So it's finished in uh, metallic black, and um, it's got carbon ceramic rims. Really nice carbon ceramic brakes, huge Aston Martin calipers. I think they're six pot calipers, um, unmarked wheels. This has just been sold to somebody and, uh, and it's come in for um, full PPF coverage. Very nice car. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick look around it, have a look on the inside, and then we'll um, start her up. Look at these doors. So the handle pops open just like this. They got this dihedral on the door, so the door sits up in the air. Let's go and have a uh, let's go and have a look inside it. Okay, so pretty much standard Aston Martin interior. The interiors these are getting a bit dated now. Um, so you've got nice uh, Alcantara um, suede roof lining and, um, and pillars. Um, this car has got the Bang & Olufsen system, so you can see these speakers just down here. So when the engine starts and stereo is turned on, these rise up out of the dashboard, which I'll show you in a second. Um, Aston Martin, pretty standard wheel yeah. with your multifunction steering um, controls. You've got your um, temperature gauge, you've got your um, rev counter just here. Um, and then it's got a uh, small uh, internal binnacle section which um, gives you other readouts. Uh, mileage, 22,000 miles, nice low mileage car. Um, speedometer and, um, and then your, um, your fuel gauge. So up here you've got your sat nav which rises up out of the dashboard once the ignition switched on, air vents. Um, this is your gearbox which is slightly different in this car. So you put your engine key in here um, and then you've got your drive, neutral, reverse and park. Your radio controls. Um, this is your climate control, part radio, part climate, um, sort of all amalgamated into one. Um, and then we've got different suspension settings here. Um, we've got the sport settings here, traction control, um, and then your, your obviously your temperature controls with the clock. Uh, down on the centre console you've got your door lock button um, and your boot release. Um, and then you've just got your different lighting things down here and your parking sensors to disable and, and to enable them at the same time. And just a nice little power outlet underneath this, this beautifully finished um, milled out piece of, uh, of steel, which is really, really Beautiful finish, so heavy and weighty. Um, and then we've got um, just down at the side, so we've got the seat control, so you've got your backrest, and um, you can see the seat sliding forwards and backwards. Three memory settings, and you just set them with this button here. Um, so this has got the, uh, the black piano finish inlays, um, and then you can see the door card is slightly different. So door card, Alcantara and um, black Nero leather, and then this uh, really nice carbon trim. So, beautifully uh, hand manufactured carbon fibre, and then just your window switches along here. Um, but it's the, it's the attention to detail in these cars. So, things like these pillars here, everything is finished in leather, um, and then it's got the nice stitch line coming down and, and back into the, um, the carbon black DBS logo just down here. Um, so, the seats, really nice seats, um, Alcantara and black leather um, with. Um, with the, uh, the double stitching um, and the Alcantara is really nice finish still um, and then just the that lovely DBS logo um, which you find um, on most of the Aston Martins and then in the back we've got some really tiny seats so you can see them in the back of the car here tiny tiny seats but beautifully sculpted bucket seats with um, um, sort of leather covered um, holders for the seat belts and this big centre console running up the centre of the car Thank you. 
So let's have a look around on the inside of this, of this car. So you can see the navigation system is up on top up here. This was always a bit of a problem in these, uh, in these cars. Navigation is, um, is really uh, a bit of a strange one. It's a Volvo system, it wasn't particularly great. So you can see um, audio controls just down here. And you can see these speakers have actually risen now out of the dashboard. And they, um, they insert themselves back in again when the engine's turned off. So here's the, uh, the instrument cluster. It's telling me the driver's door is open at the moment, which it most certainly is. So everything appears to be working pretty well in here. Um, it's a very nice place to be. Little cubby hole back here with cup holders. And this is, uh, is obviously in here. There's a small armrest, but then you can bring this forward and then you can put your drinks in. It's a particularly small cup holder. I don't think it's going to be holding particularly much, but another power outlet down here. Which you've got your glove box down here. This is an electric release, which is kind of quirky and, and a bit odd. So you actually just press this button and you can hear that little motor operating. Very small, but, but actually perfect. You don't need much more than that, really. We can have a look under the, uh, under the bonnet as well. Okay, so let's have a look inside the engine bay. So six litre V12, naturally aspirated engine. This is really one of those last engines. Everybody's going for turbocharging now, so you've got turbos, you've got smaller V8s being produced, like the Bentleys, they're going away from the V12 and, and you've got their, their new turbocharged eight cylinder. Great engine, but um, just not quite the same. In my mind, a V12 is where it should be. But having owned things like the old BMW 750iL when that first came out, um, that was an awesome car. And it had a uh, V12 in it but uh, wasn't as big as this. See all the strut bracing around the sides, all beautifully done, all machined out alumin um, aluminium. And the strut brace across the top, holding onto the turrets, down to the suspension. It's a work of art, beautiful engine. The finish is lovely. Beautifully done, all coated, that nice logo. Famous and dirty fingers now as well. But old school engineering. Really lovely car, except that could be a regular Aston Martin issue in the future. But who knows? But very nice. And we can see here, final inspection was done by Barry Griffin, so hand built in England by Aston Martin. Proper car, really beautiful. The lightest hood to close. The lightest hood. Okay, so this car is a bit special um, because what Aston Martin did was they actually did carbon fibre. So this is carbon fibre um, here. So I don't know if you can see this slight weave on top. Um, and that's the carbon actually showing through on the light. If I move around, you may be able to see it a bit better here. But you can see that. And then, so you've got carbon wings, the bonnet is also carbon fibre. Again, you can see the weave here. If you look at this square panel here, you can see it's got the square edges to it, um, and that is the, uh, the weave showing through. So this is all carbon fibre. Um, again, front wing carbon fibre on this, and then we've got carbon fibre here. These are just polycarbonate. Aluminium doors, um, aluminium side panels here, and aluminium roof. Um, but then, Again, we've got that square coming through around the edges of the lighting, and you've got a carbon fibre rear boot lid, um, and it comes down to here. Um, and then the rear bumper is polycarbonate, um, and then just the rear diffuser underneath, which is in carbon fibre. So it obviously sheds quite a lot of weight, and then the use of aluminium as well um, is really rather, rather wonderful. And that nose, beautiful front end, again with the carbon carbon splitters down here, which really set the car off. Understated. Very, very good looking. Doors. 
that I love so much. You can see down in the footwell the uh, B&O, the Bang & Olufsen speaker. You can see it up on the door cards as well here. Bang & Olufsen. Very nice sounding system. Same as I have in my Audi RS3. Again, they've got switch gear on the passenger side to, uh, to electrically adjust the seats, which you can see. And then again, these leather clad um, covers which go over the seatbelt holder. Um, really nice touch. Just don't get this in cars these days. So um, very Aston Martin. Everything has that, that very finished English leathery feel to it, which is, uh, is wonderful. And obviously this car hasn't been cleaned yet, so you're seeing it in its, uh, in its raw state. But it's um, it's really rather rather nice. That black really suits it. Okay, so a final final walk around, and then we'll we'll be on our way. This nice rear diffuser, really beautiful carbon. Okay, so on the outside of the car, in the boot. The boot's not very big. For a car that's so big, it's quite small. So you can see it's got a um, tyre inflator just over there. You've got your um, warning triangle, which is uh, standard for a European car. Um, and then um, a couple of little flaps with items tucked away, but there's not a huge amount in here. And then there's, um, this is for uh, an umbrella to be put in. So you can just unvelcro it, pop an umbrella in and, um, and then get it stored away. Particularly nice touches, things like this leather toggle which you can pull the boot lid down with. See it follows through on the edges down here. Really good looking. The wheels set it off with the carbon ceramics. You can see the main caliper and then you've got the uh, the other caliper on the other side which is um, is utilised for the handbrake on the car. Great stopping power. Okay, well thanks guys for watching again and, um, and thank you to Tom at um, Creative FX and um, he's going to be doing the full wrap on this car and uh, doing it all in PPF film. And we'll be back with another vehicle in the near future. Cheers, guys. Have a great weekend.